So this is the result that we get. So now we're just detecting this cup here in the image frame as I showed you in the code. Then we can see we, we actually draw the cup. So the, the, the name of our class that we're detecting, we're drawing the 2D bounding box. And then we're also displaying the pose of our optic that we act like estimating. So this is a six dimensional optic detection. So here we have our rotation and then we also have our translation over here to the right. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video on this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do 3D object detection and post estimation of that object. So we're going to do it on a live camera. We will open it up with OpenCV, and then we're going to use something called Efficient Pose. So basically, we just have a model that is trying to do 3D object detection and also estimate the pose of those objects that we detect in our frame. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribed to the channel. It's just a single click and it helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can help you out if you have some problems in your own projects. I can help you out, give some guidance and so on if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So first of all here in this video, we're going to start in this GitHub repository for efficient pose. So this is basically the code I have that, that I've just cloned and then I have also made like this inference on a live webcam and then we're taking specific objects that we want to do 3D post estimation of and also, also detection of. So here we can see the different kind of files that we need, but down here at the bottom, we can actually like see where it is. So this is called efficient post. So we're using deep learning to actually like do 3D object detection with the bounding boxes, as we can see down here at the bottom, we can see some 3D bounding boxes. And then we also estimate the pose of each and each of the individual objects that we detect in the scene. We can see the number of frames per second that we get over here uh, with different like types of values. So this is actually just a Keras implementation that I'm going to show you guys how we can set it up and how we can run the inference with a live web camera on your own computer. All the code will be on my GitHub, so you can go down in my GitHub link under the video here and then you just, just, just go into my GitHub, clone this repository and run it on your own computer as I'm just going to show you. So we need some insta installation. First of all, I'll basically just make a reference to this website here or like to this GitHub repository. So first of all, you need to clone this repository or my repository on uh, on my GitHub, and then you're going to create a new environment. I'm using Anaconda, then we're going to create a new environment with Anaconda because this is running on TensorFlow uh, version one, where the newer, nearest like things are actually like running on ver uh, version two of TensorFlow, and it's really hard to go like from ver TensorFlow version one to two. So you, ne you might need to install like TensorFlow uh, version one here. It is best to just like create a new environment for your specific project. And then we can also use a TPU if you have a TPU available on your computer. So we can speed up the inference. It will actually be way, way faster uh, if you have a GPU and you can run your inference on a GPU. So we need to install TensorFlow. Then we need to go into the re repository and install the different kind of like dependencies that we have. So we have like some OpenCV, NumPy, uh, TensorFlow and so on that we're going to use. And then we can basically just compile like a Cython modules because we're going to use Cython so we can actually like run this code here and also run it faster. So we need to compile some Cython modules that is also, uh, that will also be used. So basically just follow this guideline here or like these, these steps here for actually like installing these different kind of things. You also need Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, Studio so you can actually like go in and compile the Cython modules um, as well. But everything you can just follow this tutorial here and then you can get it up and started. So here we have a data set and a pre-trained weight. So in this video here, we're just going to use some, some pre-trained weights here from this repository. We can also have our own training. So basically we will just have a path to our data set and then we can just specify the weights where we want to store the weights file. And then we can just call this Python script here, train.py. And then we can actually like just train our own model, model here on this data set here, or like on this model, pre-trained model, they're using a data set called line mod and also occlusion. And I think they're also using like the Kogoro dataset for 3D optic detection um, as well. Uh, we can also see like for inference here, we can run their inference uh, Python file here. We can also do it on a webcam, which is the, the Python file that I have just like edited. So we can run it in OpenCV and on your own computer and take specific objects and act like do optic detection with that. So here we can see that we both get like 3D post estimation and also detection of those objects in the, in the scene or like from the images that we have in our camera. So let's not jump into the code here. I'm just going to go over the code here like kind of fast and then we're going to run it and then we're going to see the actual like results that we get by you doing like 3D object detection and post estimation of those objects. So first of all here we need to, I have our Anaconda environment. So I've just created my an, 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 an Anaconda environment 
we can see here I have an environment called efficient post and then we basically just have Python 3.7 and then I just installed uh, TensorFlow 1 uh, point something with GPU support. So we're going to run this on the GPU. So first of all here, I'm just going to choose this environment. We're going to import the different kind of modules that we need. So we need OpenCV to open up our actual like webcam, NumPy, some math modules, and also TensorFlow. And then down here at the bottom, we're just going to import the model. So we're going to have our efficient model built. And then we also have some utils to actually like pre-process the image before we can pass it into our efficient net. So we're using some kind of like efficient net structure as a backbone for extracting features. And then to build this post um, estimation neural network on top of that efficient net uh, to actually like do the, uh, the six dimensional or like 60 post estimation of our objects in the scene. Then we also have some utils for our visualization. So we basically, we can just draw our detections that we're detecting in our image. Then we have our main function, which we can actually just run efficient pose in inference mode live on a webcam. So we're just going to open up a webcam, load in the images, pass that image through the model, and then we just get the results out and display those results um, on a window here from OpenZV. So here we can see that we set our CUDA visible devices here equal to zero. So we're going to use the GPU if we actually have a CUDA installed and we also have an NVIDIA, um, uh, NVIDIA graphic card here that we can run our inference on instead. Then we can specify the path to our weight. So here we can see we have different kind of like weights if we're going to the weight files up here at the top. So in here we have a folder called weights. We just go inside that. Then if you want to use the weight trained on the Coco data set or like the line mod or the occlusion data set, we can just go in here and then we can choose the different kind of like pre-trained models that we have. So this way here, we're just going to go with efficient uh, dead um, D0. So we're just going to specify the path here to our weights. And then we can also specify if you want to have a safe path, if you want to uh, like save our results somewhere in a directory or like in a file or folder. Then we can also specify the image extension and so on. We're not going to do that in this video here because we're just going to open up a live webcam and actually like run it. Then we're going to open up our Coco labels.txt file. So we basically just read in all the class names that we have in our Coco. Uh, data set so we can actually like display what are we detecting of our objects later on when we actually like run our model so this will just load in all the labels from the coco data set then we can set up a score threshold for our confidence score so if we are above this threshold here we're actually like confident that this is a good detection and then we're going to say like this is a detection if our detection or like a confidence score of our detection is lower than this threshold here then we will just like occlude that um that uh, detection or we'll just like will not take care of that detection. Uh, so you can play around with this threshold here. You can like lower it a bit more if you don't get any detection of all, or if you get too many like false positive, you can also like increase this threshold value here as well. Then we're just going to have some booleans here for like drawing like a boundary box in 2D. And also if you want to draw the name of the detection that we're actually like doing, first of all, we need to get our camera matrix. If you want to get more exact results and if you're training on your own data set, you should calibrate your camera uh, by yourself and also get the camera matrix for your own camera to get better results. But in this video here, we're just going to go with the examples uh, where we're going to use the line mod camera matrix. So the intrinsic parameters of the camera that, that is used for this data set here. Then we also have the names for the 3D boundary boxes. So if you want to draw the 3D boundary boxes, we'll also get those for the line mod uh, data set. So in this video here, we're just going to draw 2D boxes around our objects, and then we're going to do post estimation of those objects because we need to actually like detect uh, the items from the line mode data set if we want to do like these 3D boundary boxes and draw them uh, on top of our uh, on top of our detections. Then we can also have our classes for our 3D boxes, so the same as for 2D. So if you wanted to display what our, what type of objects are we actually like detecting in our image frame. So we are also get the number of classes and then we're just going to build our model and load the weights. So here we basically just pass in our functions. So we have the number of classes, we have a file value, we have the confidence score and then we have the path to our weights. And then this model here, uh, like this build model and load weights will actually like just uh, build the efficient net model that I showed you. And then it's going to load the weights into the model. So it's basically just creating our neural networks and then loading the weights into our neural networks. Then we both have our model and we also have the image size so then we can open up our webcam here with the video capture. We're just going to take the serif index um, because this is the first camera that I've attached to my computer or like in my computer. Then we have our webcam open. 
we're just printing out that we're starting the inference then we have a while loop running like as long as we're not terminating our program by hitting q or some other different kind of like values so here if you hit q we would actually like just terminate our program then we can go in load in an image from a webcam so we just have webcam.read we will then read in our if image frame from our webcam we will store it in this image variable and then we can also check or we have this boolean got image so if we if we got the image here we will just continue and if not we'll just going to like terminate our program as well because then we can't read in image frames from our webcam so here we're just going to make a copy of our image so we have our original image that we can display things on later on because the first image here or like the image that we will read in from our webcam we're going to pass that into our pre-process method so this is basically just going to pre-process our image it's going to resize it with the image uh, image size here it's going to use the camera's intrinsic parameters and also the translation scale uh, norm so then we're just pre-processing our image we get back the scale and also the put list here or like the input list here so this will be the input list that we're going to pass through our neural network or like this model that we created up here with the build model and load weights method then we can actually just do our prediction so we read in an image or oh, first of all we build a model we uh we actually like load in the weight to our model then we read in an image we pre-process our image and then we can basically just pass that image that pre-processed image through our model then at the end of the model we will get a, an, an output then we can do post-processing of that output draw a different kind of information show the confidence score show the labels of the 3d uh, 3d uh, optics that we have actually detected so now we're going to take the prediction step we have our boxes it, this method here will actually return the boxes so the boundary boxes the score so the confidence score of how confident are we that we actually like detect the, the correct um objects we also have the labels of those objects we have the rotation and also the translations so this will be the post estimation of each of the individual objects that we detect in the scene and we get these results by just calling model.predict on batch and then we just throw in our input list that we have from our pre-processed image then we can actually like do some post-processing again we're just going to have some post-processing we're just going to pass in our outputs from our neural network and then we just post process them and then we get the results back here at the end um, again then we actually like have everything we can just draw the detection so we can just call it method here that we that we imported in the start of this program or like in the start of the video here so we draw the detection we pass in the original image boxes scores labels uh, also the poses so the rotation and the translation you got just combine that and you will get a transformation or like this six dimensional optic detection or like post estimation of our objects we also have the class or boundary boxes our camera matrix uh, the label to the name if you want to draw the, the 2d boundary box and also if you want to draw the name on our image then down here we're just going to have a for loop running through all the labels that we have so here labels uh, 46 here in the Coco data set is a cop so you can just choose any label from the Coco data set you can just google like the Coco data set and you can get the indexes you can also go in here in the file that we just load in in the start uh, so here we have the text file so if you go down to uh, 46 here we can see that we get a cop so we start from the zero index that's why we have 40 46 so we have to go not one number lower but then you can basically just cho uh, choose between like all of these different kind of indexes you can also detect multiple objects in your scene but if you just want to uh, actually just want to detect one specific object you just go in here and take these indexes you can also have multiple indexes where you just have a list running through all of these detections and checking if the labels correspond to any of these so we have a lot of different kind of optics that we can detect from this uh, coco data set so now here we're just going to detect like if we detect a cop in our image we're just going to print out or like put out the text here that we have actually like detected a cop and then we're also going to put the, out the text for our rotation and also for our translation for that object or like for that cop that we have detected in the image so basically we're just showing the 2d bounding box of the object that we detected and then we're going to show the post estimation of that object in the scene then down here we can just display the image with our predictions so we're just going to use im show image with prediction and then we're going to pass in the original image we've also put this text up here for our post estimation and then down here we can basically just have our webcam released and so on if we hit q on our keyboard and that's basically everything that we need to go through here so this is our main function and then down here at the bottom we just have these like get line mod camera matrix so we basically just have our camera uh, cameras intrinsic parameters for uh, for a camera you can specify your own camera parameters here if you want to get more precise results we can also get the line mark 3d boundary boxes so if you want to detect any of these here we can actually go in and display the bounding boxes on top of 
uh, on top of our detected objects instead of only the 2D bounding boxes. Uh, and these are just like all these different kind of functions, also build model and load the weights. So basically here is just creating the efficient, uh, efficient uh, net model. So we have efficient pose here, and then we just load the weights and so on. But now we're going to run the program and see the results and how it actually like works here with our live webcam. So now we're actually running the program here. We can see that we're successfully opening up like these different kind of like CUDA modules that we need. So here we can see that we're using a GPU. Here we can see the information about our GPU. So I have an NVIDIA GTX 1060, six gigabyte of, uh, of uh, memory. So here we're using a GPU. We can see that we have loaded the weights. This is done and then we're starting the inference. Then we're opening up our webcam and so on. So this is the result that we get. So now we're just detecting this cup here in the image frame as I showed you in the code. Then we can see we, we actually draw the cup. So the, the, the name of our class that we're detecting, we're drawing the 2D bounding box. And then we're also displaying the pose of our object that we act like estimating. So this is a six dimensional object detection. So here we have our rotation and then we also have our translation over here to the right. Then we can actually like see if I'm moving, if I just hold it pretty stable here, even though the bounding box is actually like uh, flickering a bit, we still see we get values around like 0.8 here, 0.8 here, and 0.40, uh, 40, uh, 0.8 here, point around like 30 to 40 here if we're just holding our camera still. If I'm starting to move the camera here, we can see that we actually like get some changes in the values. We also get some changes in the, in the translation over here uh, to the right. So this is basically just estimating where is the object with respect to the camera. So if you want to do it in something like kind of like global scene, you will have to calibrate your camera. You need to know like where is your camera with respect to your like global scene. And then you can actually like estimate where is that uh, object with the respect to the camera. And then you can transform that from the camera to the world scene. And then you can actually like detect where is the object in the, in like the whole like world or like in the object, uh, your defined reference frame. Here we see we move further back here. We can change the direction. We can also see detect some other different kind of uh, monitor up here at the top, but we're only interested in the cup. I can also move it in the other direction and we can see that it acts like changes to positive values for our cup. So sometimes we lose track of it. We can play around with the threshold, um, but now we can see that we're detecting a cup. We're also doing the post estimation. So this can be used for a lot of different kind of things. This acts like a really cool a model that you can just run. You can run it on all these different kind of objects that I showed you. It's actually like a really good post estimate that we get. Just think of like we just need to we just need to open up this code here. We just need to like take in an image, pre-process it, pass it through the model with some pre-trained weights, and then we just pre-process or like post-process the output. We just display those outputs on the image here as you can see. You can choose any other objects. You can just pass it in with the index here in my code and run it on your own computer and then you basically have a 3D object detector that is also doing post estimation of that object in the same time. You can detect multiple objects in the scene and you can do post estimation like simultaneously on all those objects. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember the subscribe button and bell notification on the video. It just will help me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. So in the future, I'm definitely going to do more videos about this efficient pose uh, model, how we can use it for other different kind of objects, how we can train on our own data set. Uh, play around with it, make it more specific, do more modifications to the code that they have provided for doing like live inference on a webcam. Also how we can draw the bounding boxes or like the 3D bounding boxes on the objects because that's also really cool. And then both dis display the 3D bounding boxes and coordinate system of the post automation and so on. So I'm really looking forward to that. If in the meantime, you're interested in computer vision, deep learning and so on, I also have tutorials about that. I'll link to one of them up here or else on the next video guys. Bye for now.